Hey everybody, welcome back to My Wings of Refuge. I'm excited today y'all because I have actually been planning to make Boston baked beans again for a long time and today I'm ready to get these beans on the shelves so let's get started. I am starting with four pounds of dried navy beans. Um, you want to, the night before, to soak them in water in your refrigerator. Just cover them completely with water and just give them plenty of room because they're going to expand and uh, to make sure they stay in there. If you wake up one day and you're ready to just gung-ho, let's get started, and you didn't soak your beans, it's okay. What you can do is go ahead and put them in your pot, cover them with about two inches of water, bring them to a boil. After bringing them to a boil, you would actually turn off the heat and let them sit there and soak for a good hour. And so I have actually soaked my beans overnight, so I'm going to pick up from there. And I now have them in a pot. They're rinsed and drained, and but then I've added water, so it's about two inches above my beans. And I'm going to turn this heat to high because we're going to bring this to a boil then we're going to reduce the heat. Then we're going to let this simmer until the beans start to crack just a little bit. Okay, I'm ready to reduce my heat to about a medium low. Um, soaking them overnight really helps expedite this beginning part so you won't have to do it very long. So, while my beans are cracking a little bit more. Um, I'm now going to get all my other ingredients ready. So if you like baked beans, you will love this recipe. And who doesn't want to have an abundance of baked beans on the shelves? One, you can eat them year around, but hey, there's about to be a lot of summertime dinners and cookouts and grills going on, and you're gonna be able to walk into your canning shelf and just pull off a can of your homemade baked beans that are gonna be so delicious and so, so much more cost effective and so much better, and you know exactly all the ingredients that are going into it. That for me is huge. So here you can see the beans are starting to crack. So we're ready to assemble everything into a large baking dish to go in the oven. Okay, so here we have our bacon. It's about a pound of bacon. I went ahead and browned it in my air fryer, but you don't have to do that. You can put it in there raw if you like. And then here we have our brown sugar. I used uh, about two cups, a little less maybe. And here we have onions and I used about six onions. You can use any onion that you like. You'll see the molasses down in here. I used about two cups, maybe a hair less, not more. Um, a little garlic powder, maybe two teaspoons, a little salt, about uh, four teaspoons, and mustard powder, which is about four teaspoons. And so now we're ready to drain our beans, but we want to keep the liquid. Here is our drained beans, and now we're gonna add these beans to our pot. Now you want to give these a good, good stir. So we have our bean mixture here, and here, if you can see this yellow bowl, it's all of my reserved water. And so I have a one cup measuring cup, and I actually want to add eight cups of our bean liquid right into our pot. And again, we're gonna give it a good stir and we're gonna save our water because we may need it again. We have set our oven at 350 degrees. It is ready, it has reached its temperature. So I'm just gonna give this another good stir. But we're gonna put this in the oven for three hours. So in true Boston baked bean fashion, you want to bake these beans at 350. You don't want to necessarily uh, simmer them on the stove. However, you could. You could do that, but it will not be a traditional baked bean or traditional Boston baked beans because technically you have to bake them to be baked beans. So we're just going to give these a good stir. 
and then we're going to cover them and put them in the oven for three hours but we are going to check them at least once an hour and we're going to constantly stir them and check our liquid you want this to be soupy you do not want it to dry and anytime you look at it and it looks a little dry then you will want to add another cup or however much it takes of your bean water if you run out of bean water or for some reason you fail to save your bean water then you can use just water that will be fine too okay I'm just going to smooth these out poke everything into the liquid a little bit we will cover and bake three hours at 350 we are at the one hour mark and I'm just going to give it a good stir. We still have lots of liquid so I'm not going to try to add any liquid at this point. Just going to stir it up a little bit. Mmm, starting to get that beautiful color. So we're just going to stir some more. We still got a good amount of liquid. We've got an hour and a half left on our timer. So at this point, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and taste of your sauce. Make sure it's everything you want it to be. And if not, now would be a time to add anything else you wanted to add. If you wanted to add a little, I'm gonna add just a little bit more liquid. You want them to be soupy. This is our bean liquid. I like that juice. There we go. Okay. Hook them in the water. Okay, there's our timer, so I'm going to shut this off, turn off our oven, and I'm ready to get the beans out of the oven, and we're about ready to fill our jars. Oh, yes. Doesn't this look wonderful? Again, you want to make sure it stays soupy, so if you need to, go ahead and add a little bit more of your water. Let's fill those jars. Okay, so I have been keeping my jars warm in the pressure canner, but notice my lid is not sitting on there uh, very tight and the valve is open. And so I'm just using this to hold the jars and to keep them warm. So I'm going to remove this lid. I have a rack here. I'm just going to sit it on. I don't want to hurt your countertops. And then I'm going to get all the jars out and I'm going to fill them to one inch head space. And when we do that, we want to make sure that the beans are fairly covered. If you need to, add a little bit more liquid on the top because as they cook, they're going to soak up some more of that liquid and you don't want them to be too dry. Okay? So I have all of my jars here filled and the next thing I want to do is de-bubble. Next, we're going to measure for one inch head space and adjust your jars accordingly. Once all of your jars are measured to one inch, next you want to come back around and make sure you wipe those rims clean. You can check your paper towel and just make sure there's no dried beans or juice or anything on there. If you see something on there, clean it some more. Then our rings, finger tight. Next, 
we will put these jars right in our canner. Now I have a double decker canner so make sure you have room for these jars in your canner. Okay, we're going to put our lid on. Seal it, lock it up really tight. Follow your manufacturer's instructions for your canner. I'm going to crank up our heat to high and I'm going to let this come back up to temperature. It's still very hot, uh, but it is not boiling because your manufacturer's instructions will tell you how much water to have in your canner. Mine doesn't need very much, so I turned the temperature down so that it wouldn't boil all the way out while we were loading it. So I have my valve open. What we want to do is we want this to heat up, and it's heating up pretty quickly because like I said, it was pretty hot still. So this we're going to let heat thoroughly, and we want it to steam. As it starts steaming, Set your timer for 10 minutes. We want it to stay open and steam for 10 solid minutes. Then we will close that valve. Okay, so we have a steady rumble, but most importantly, we have a steady steam. And so I'm gonna set the timer for 10 minutes to let that just keep steaming for 10 minutes before we do anything else. And there's our timer. We'll shut that off. We're gonna close close our valve. When this is steaming heavily, it really does steam up the room, so I do like to turn the vent on sometimes. It helps relieve some of that pressure of the steam in the room. So anyway, um, I digress. Okay, we've shut off our valve, and now we want to keep our eye on the pressure gauge before we set our timer. We are just waiting for the pressure to rise to 10 pounds. Hey, I have hit 10 pounds of pressure, so now I'm going to set my timer. Since I used pint jars, I'm going to set the timer for one hour and 20 minutes. If you used quart jars, you want to set your timer for one hour and 35 minutes. So now we're just going to keep our pressure at 10 pounds for our, until our timer goes off, and then we'll be ready. There's our timer. I'm just going to shut off the timer and I'm going to turn off the heat, not touching anything else. All we want to do is let this cool down naturally, let the pressure fall naturally. We're not opening any valves. The number one thing in canning is having hot food to go in hot jars that go in a hot canner. Whatever you do, you don't want major temperature fluctuations. Same thing with your canner at the end of canning is you have a hot canner and you don't want to open this or adjust your valve and release too much pressure or have it cool down too quickly because that could affect your seals on your jars. Everything needs to be slow in temperature changing. So we're not gonna touch this. We're simply turning off the heat. So we'll let this cool completely natural. And just remember, taste your sauce in that last hour and adjust accordingly. You can add mustard, you can add ketchup, you can add barbecue sauce, you can add more sweetener if need be, anything that you like. As far as sauce and within reason, you're pressure canning so it should be okay. Uh, and you're pressing pressure canning for meat times so it really should be okay. Nothing's happening. I think we're ready. Thank you so much for watching today's video, y'all. That is a wrap. I hope you enjoyed it. Y'all please stay tuned. You just never know what's happening here in the homestead. And let me just say, there is a lot going on right now on the homestead. But y'all, these beans are fantastic. And uh, I will say, I smoked a smoked barbecued rubbed uh, lamb roast today. And uh, while I was uh, cooking the beans, 
And so I had just enough beans left over, probably for probably about a quart sized jar. And uh, but I saved those for our dinner for tonight, and it was fabulous. So I've already gotten to sample them without having to crack open one of my jars. So I'm really excited. But I did get 13 pint jars out of that four pound batch. And so I'm pretty excited. I hope you have a great week, y'all. And I will see you next time.